Okay. First on APA style. Um, the best uh, one is the APA publication manual, uh, having that. Are students required to purchase one? Okay. Um, and, uh, and Purdue Owl. Let me just tell you the way I use these. Oh, well, I, I think I already did, right? So if I have kind of an everyday quick question, you know, where do I put the period? You know, what are the order of elements? Uh, I'll refer to the Purdue Owl. Um, but if it's a little more involved question, I'll go right to the publication manual. Um, I had an occasion to use it just a couple of weeks ago uh, in working with a professor, and I can't remember the situation, so I can't be more specific. But it was an answer, the, their question was pretty involved. And I was like, I need to go to the manual and find this out. Um, right, so that kind of dual use and understanding, standing that. Okay, I wanna go to the Purdue OWL, because uh, I've had, has, has anybody kind of walked you through using the Purdue OWL? And I, can't, I encounter this all the time. Oh, did you look at Purdue Owl? Yeah, I looked there, but they didn't, they didn't tell me, you know, one of them was like, oh, I get this a lot. They didn't tell me how to cite this. I was like, oh, okay. So what the Purdue Owl is, so go ahead and um, uh, access the Purdue Owl. Um, you can look it up, it's Purdue Owl, and that'll, it'll get there. But uh, the Owl is really great, there's a lot a lot, a lot here. I used to work in a writing center at Fresno State, um, and I would I would refer to this a lot because there's so much here, and they give some pretty good examples. We're going to look at a couple of pages um, coming up. All righty, um, all right. So just kind of look here. Um, research and citation, avoiding plagiarism. Um, Right, graduate right, graduate level writing. If somebody you go into graduate school, this will help you kind of can help you kind of understand. Okay, what when you get into graduate school, the expectations of your writing go up. Um, did you find that? Yeah, yeah. You're expected to write better uh, and and become a better writer. So this can help with that. Um, this one I think is really helpful, subject specific writing. Right, so what they're, they're taking is, you know, kind of general areas uh, of study and saying, okay, this is how you, how you write. Uh, healthcare writing would be right, writing as a professional nurse. Um, okay. So understanding the tools that are available to us um, can be really helpful. I wanna look really quickly at the APA guide. So go and scroll down. To APA. Um, so once we get here, right, so we have a kind of a general in, um, in, in the introduction and a couple of links here to link uh, to go out to. The way I find it, I find it, uh, I end up using it um, just to demonstrate something. So some, oftentimes, if I have a very specific question, I'll lick, uh, excuse me, click the link, <laughs> uh, APA formatting and style tag. And I will find here where I need to go, right? So in-text citations, the basics, and then the breakdowns, variations with authors um, and, and different um, producers. Then there's reference list. Right. Reference list articles and periodicals, journals, reference list for books, um, footnotes and appendices. Um, I don't know if y'all use footnotes or appendices, but they can be super duper helpful. If you're alluding to an idea and you're taking a part of an idea from it, but you feel that it, it would be good for your writer, your readers to have a fuller context. Put in, you can put in a footnote or an, or an appendix. Super duper helpful. Um, professional level writers use them all the time. Right. Uh, so let's come to reference list. 
references, references in articles and periodicals. So you've probably probably noticed that different articles are, are a little little bit different, um, and this will help us kind of get a sense of what these differences look like. So here's an article in a print journal. Uh, all right, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, article in electronic journal, very similar, uh, but it will be a little bit different. Um, and I'm gonna talk about a, a significant variation in, in a bit. Um, let me ask this here real quickly, DOI. Y'all noticed DOIs? Do you know what they are? stands for digital object identifier. And what was happening was early on in when uh, the internet was becoming a part of scholarly work, um, a lot of professors would, would say, oh, I found this article in a database. And sometimes they'd try to return to look at that database uh, for that article in the database. And sometimes they weren't finding it there or sometimes they would direct a student to this. Uh, I, this is the article, the author and the title of the page. I found it in such and such a database. A student would go there and it wasn't there. Um, so that part of that is the business of scholarly publishing. Sometimes producers of journals and the databases get into squabbles about licensing. Uh, it actually happens quite a lot. Um, so sometimes a journal will say, you know, they had, they gave you full access in one database but they'll get into a spat with, <laughs> about licenses and they'll say, okay, fine, we're gonna withdraw uh, full access. You can still index, what they call it indexing. So you can still, people can still find out that this exists, but they can't get full access through this database. And sometimes they just say all together, nah, y'all are a bunch of idiots. Taking it, we're taking everything, I'm taking all my toys home. So the DOI system was developed once that started really becoming a big problem. Um, so it's tied to the publisher. It's a link that's tied to the publisher, not to the database. Right, and so if the publisher gets into a squabble and they pull their, their information out, that they have a file to send to the new database. And it's the same link. Really helpful, um, but just to let you know. So um, oftentimes, um, if there is a DOI associated with uh, a work that you're using, always, always, always give the DOI. Um, if you get it from a database, don't give a database link, give the DOI. Um, there are some databases like um, JSTOR. How many are familiar with JSTOR? Okay, yeah, it's, it's usually humanities and social sciences. Um, there are some health sciences work in there, but um, I don't. The students, the nursing students I have worked with, I've never pushed them there because they're a better tool. But if they have what's called a stable link, uh, then you can give that. Make sense? Right. So they also give um, articles in a magazine, uh, article in the newspaper. And what, the, what they do in Purdue Owl is they help us understand the pattern that we need to use. I think the students, students that I've worked with thought it was going to give them the citation for their exact piece, um, but it's going to give you the pattern. Uh, and they do uh, link to citation machine. If there is a digital periodical, if there's a digital journal, citation, will, citation machine works fine. If it's a print journal from a print journal that doesn't have a DOI, it can be really, really spotty. Um, so uh, just kind of be aware of that. Does that help? Yeah, the Purdue Owl is really useful, but if, if we don't get kind of a step through for it, it, can't, it can be frustrating. Um, and I totally sympathize with those students that I've worked with. Um, okay. So let's see, and this is, we've already kind of gone down. Oh, I want to point this out to you. Um, if you're following along, or if you're still on the research guide, here's a good cheat sheet from Northwest Indian College, uh, up, just up on Bellingham. 
Uh, it's a pretty good cheat sheet. Um, I love cheat sheets um, and I love recommending them to students. Um, a lot of times you can answer your own question if you know what you're, how to look for it. That being said, I'm gonna throw this out there, out here. So the nursing, do y'all know who the nursing librarian is? Stephanie? Shoot, if you have questions about citations, shoot them to Stephanie. Uh, sometimes Stephanie will kind of pass it on to me and then I'll answer it. But we're gonna we're gonna help you get an answer to your question on that. And so don't ever feel like you're left alone. Okay. So we're gonna talk about a little bit about paper formatting, but we are at about another stopping space. Um, so why don't we take a quick break? Uh, everybody get up, walk around, get the get the blood flow going. Let's go ahead and say about three three minutes. <laughs> 